Cooking up my food for Sunday. Cooking up my chicken for Sunday. Why is Bill calling me? <laughs> Hello? Hi, Bill. Yeah. You alright, mate? What do you mean why I'm not at work today? <laughs> because there's no news to tell. Have you found me any stories? What? But if you give me a pay rise, then we can talk about me going full time. But up until then, psh, we can't just be doing news every week for the sake of it. I've got two jobs now, do you know what I mean? Right, so anyway, I'm seasoning my chicken, so what do you want, Bill? You want to come in for that? Oh, I'm not getting changed. I'm in my own clothes. Right, I'm here. I'm here. Where's the comms? Yeah, Bill, I'm here. I'm here. Are we gonna do this or what? Hello! You're watching NNN on New Nintendo News. Oh, mm -hmm. But there's not that many ends though, is there? This is a weekly gaming show where we keep you, yes, we're gonna keep you up to date with the latest Nintendo gaming news, although there is none this week, Bill. I mean, really? Seriously? Are we gonna do this? I don't find anything to talk about this week. <laughs> on today's show, this week we will be taking a look at Bill, what are we taking a look at? Seriously, come on now, because there's no news. What, what are we doing? I, I don't actually know what today's show is going to be about. Um, we found a few small little articles. Nothing's really popping off. I really think we need to go multi-format, Bill. Kicking off our first story, Animal Crossing the movie, oh my days, and guess what, it's a horror film, <laughs> yeah, Animal Crossing the horror film, well, it's not going to be quite Animal Crossing the horror film, Let, let's slow down a bit and let's explain. So reading a pod on Video Games Chronicle, it says Animal Crossing horror movie gets the green light. It got the green light. A short horror movie about a monster trapped inside Animal Crossing New Horizons is to be made into a feature length motion picture. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> Don't Peek made its world premiere March 15th on the first day of SXSW Online. The short follows a young woman discovering a frightening video game character intent on crossing into the real world. Up is in at the house. Listen, I don't want no demons coming from my computer into my house. You better turn off the switch, mate. Uh, a trailer dropped. Oh my god, even the picture that is really creeping me out. Can we get that on the screen, Bill? Can we get that on the screen? Look at that. That's really scary. That's freaking me out. Anyway, Don't Peek is a short film unaffiliated with Nintendo which was shot during quarantine by director Julian Terry and focuses on a woman playing her Switch in bed at night. Now I watched the trailer for this and it was it was actually really it was actually really good. You need to watch the video. Go and watch the full clip on YouTube. The link is below in the description. Is that what they say? Bill? Is that, that what I'm supposed to say? Link below in the description. Now, we know the Nintendo ninjas are. There's no way, let, let's be honest, there's no way that Nintendo are gonna let this Russian guy make an Animal Crossing movie. Do you know what I mean? It's not gonna happen. He, he's gone, he's openly stated and said, it's not an Animal Crossing feature. We know we can't legally get away with that. I know you can't legally get away with that because Nintendo would shut that right down, mate. Nintendo do not mess about when it comes to season desist, let me tell you. Even if you are doing something for charity, Nintendo will shut that down. The director then goes on to say, the story is actually something else entirely and taps into the nostalgia of video games. I can't wait for you all to see it. According to Deadline, the short is to be adapted into a feature length film by Timur Beck. But no, no, Bill, Bill, one minute. We need to pause. Can we stop filming? According to Deadline, the short is to be adapted into a feature length film by Timur Beck Mambatov. Beck Mambatov. Beck Mambatov. Bambatov. According to Deadline, the short is to be adapted into a feature-length film by Timur Bek Bambatov, who, who previously produced the Unfriend horror movie. Oh, oh, we did Unfriended. 
and night watch and day watch okay the old friend horror films I've, I've only seen one i think uh, when it came out it was a decent horror film because it had the new spin on the genre, do you know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it's okay. It taps into the whole social commentary on how social media is killing us all. Ooh, friend request. Ooh, I think I'm a friend request. Ooh, I want to go find friends. Ooh. However, Night Watch and Day Watch. Oh no. I thought Night Watch was something else. I've not seen this film. I don't know what this film is, but this film looks bonkers. I mean, what is happening? Bill. Have you seen the trailer for Nightwatch? It looks absolutely bizarre. Oh my god, I can't believe that this person has been entrusted. The Animal Crossing movie. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay, this guy is really conflicting my emotions. So, reading the article on Deadline, it says, Timur Beck, my butt, oh my god, Beck Mambatov. So, <laughs> uh, best known for the hyper-violent Angelina Jolie that Thriller Wanted. And Bonkers first put in live action shooter Hardcore Henry? Oh my god, okay, so Hardcore Henry, I've seen this guy's playing with my emotions. That Hardcore Henry is a first person shooter in, in film format. It's totally ridiculous, but it's an absolute blast. It's wacky. That has got to be the gayest jacket I've ever seen. Krasnay Kurka! It's mental. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I wanna make a man out of you. It's like a video game. If you've not watched Hacko Ham, go and watch it. This mad scientist kidnaps this guy's girlfriend. Ah, you need to watch it, it's mental. This guy's like Robocop and he's got Go and watch Hacko Henry, please. <laughs> Moving on to the next story, Rick and Morty have merged with Animal Crossing. Yeah, we just can't get enough of this bloody game now. Sick! <laughs> um, I, yeah, but I watched the trailer for this. Uh, go and watch the trailer on Adult Swim. Uh, the link is in the description below. You got it right, Bill. Go and check it out. It's just mad. It's insane. It's Rick and Morty in Animal Crossing. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I don't actually like the graphical style. Why is it that kind of clay weird? Why didn't they just do 2D style Animal Crossing in the Rick and Morty style? Or? I don't know. Just not that. But I think it's cool nonetheless. Dan Harmon does love Nintendo. Is it Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland? Justin Roiland. They love Nintendo. They always put like Nintendo little Easter eggs in Rick and Morty. You guys, we gotta hurry. I just got back from Walmart. They're selling Nintendo 3DS systems for $149.99 on sale. Hurry, hurry, come with me. We can be rich and we also all get to keep one and we can play Nintendo games. So, I mean, yeah, fair play to you. Can, can we have more Nintendo crossovers, please? More Nintendo mentions. I love it. Nintendo, give me free stuff. Anyway, moving on to the next story. Reading an article on Nintendo Life, it says Sony and RTS jointly acquire fighting game tournament EVO. Mind blowing! Now, now this is actually big. This is actually big. EVO has is one of the it, well, EVO is the biggest fighting tournament in gaming. <laughs> It's massive every year. Smash Brothers has always had a place in the EVO Championships. You know, at one point, more people were playing Smash Brothers Melee um, than any other fighting game going. I can't remember what year it was, and to be honest, Bill, do we have the time to go and check the facts? No. Smash Brothers donned up the EVO Champion Fightingship scene for a very long time, and now Sony own it. Let's read the article. Um, so, the lineup of EVO this year it currently includes Tekken 7, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate and Guilty Gear Strive. Um, yeah, better Dragon Ball Z? Oh. Sony Interactive Entertainment, in partnership with the eSports business RTS, has acquired the annual fighting game tournament EVO. While this now effectively makes it a Sony PlayStation event, EVO's Director of Global Business Development, Mark Julio, says the annual tournament is still open to all platforms but nintendo aren't gonna want to mess with you now nintendo ain't gonna want to 
with that. L let me tell you. <laughs> Nintendo are just going to go and do that old Smash Bros. tournaments now. Nintendo don't need Evo. Do they need Evo? This is the thing that I don't know. The fact that they have a, a high amount of people who are registering for Smash Bros. I don't necessarily think it will carry over to Nintendo's own individual Smash Bros. tournaments. I feel like the culmination of Tekken, Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, Dragon Ball Z, Smash Bros. Like all those massive iconic fighting games being played in one game in arena over the course of however many days it it feeds into the whole competitiveness of it and if smash movies goes over and does just their own tournament i, I don't think it's gonna have the same impact the same vibe happy feet I just don't think they're gonna get that same hype if they do their own tournaments. Um, here's some official PR from SIE along with Evo's message. Fighting games are hugely popular on PlayStation consoles. Just hugging all the limelight. With gamers logging more than 1.1 billion gameplay hours in 2020 alone, we're committed to breaking down the barriers for gamers to compete at all levels and providing a best in class global platform for them to showcase their skills and passions. Now, let me tell you, I'm angry, right? Yeah, all right, yeah, 1.1 billion players you've got logged there, right? But I'm angry about the fact that Sony have already took Street Fighter away from <laughs> the rest of the gaming landscape. Street Fighter is now an exclusive to PlayStation. Like, I, I'm a fighting game fan, and I don't like the way that Sony just shepherded all these fighting games and keeping them in their corner. I'm, I'm not happy about that. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And Nintendo, reading the article, Nintendo has enjoyed engaging with fans at past EVO tournaments and Mr. Showrunner is the best with their new venture. We will continue to assess EVO and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Bros. tournament activity. Nintendo are going to go and do their own thing. Yeah, anyway, Sony own EVO fighting championships and I doubt that Smash Bros. will be part of the conversation anymore. And moving on to our next story! <laughs> but I'm going home soon, you know, because I feel like this is so pointless. Yes, the next story, absolutely killer blow. This is more of a personal story, it's not that big of a news, but Kid Icarus Uprising, the 3DS game, which I thought was, it was great. The control scheme was rubbish. You, you had to... You <laughs> Do you remember that add-on? It had this add-on for the 3DS and it was a cradle to give you your analog stick. It was an on rails shoot em up. So you had to control Icarus with the analog stick, but then you also needed to aim your reticle. Like Star Fox, it was just like Star Fox. Susan, go and get my 3DS so I can demonstrate what I'm talking about. Yes, now. Oh, thanks, babes. Yeah, so you'd have to get your 3DS and you'd have your stylus. Where is my stylus? Susan, where's my bloody stylus, man? So you'd have to have your 3DS like this, and then you would aim like that. And after 10 minutes, I'm not gonna lie, your hand would cramp up. I got pains in my hand multiple times. Felt to sue Nintendo. Anyway, the game was fantastic. The characters were great. The voice acting was great. Like, Sakurai brought so much character to Kid Icarus. Because the last time we'd seen him was on the NES. Do you know what I mean? He looked like this. Didn't speak. I mean... He's probably comprised of about, what, 20 pixels? And then the next time we saw him, Sakurai had just turned him into this. Underling of Medusa floating before me! It's time for you to atone for your crimes! I am Pit, servant of the goddess of life! And you are history! And it was fantastic. It was great. It was like a Saturday morning cartoon. That's one thing I do remember about it. It felt like it was just, it was a joy to play. This game was a joy to play. I loved it. I've always wanted a sequel. Just give me an HD remaster. Um, just give us the game again, please, Sakurai. Listen to this. So Sakurai basically has been tweeting on social media and has acknowledged the fact that people have been requesting a new Kid Icarus. I want one for some. In fact, it's been so long I just forgot about it. And plus he's been enslaved to Super Smash Bros. I mean, this guy does not have any more time to make any more games because he's been working on Super Smash Bros. since like 2010. No, seriously, when did... Uh, he's been working on Super Smash Bros. for years. He doesn't have time to make any other games. I wonder if I'll ever get to take a break. But anyway, he's acknowledged that his team have received numerous requests for a sequel 
and he said that making a title would be difficult. So people are saying that the game won't happen basically, it's never going to happen, he's never going to do another one. I'm not happy about that. Someone's gone online and said, well, they're basically gone. How does that sentence confirm that he's absolutely not interested in doing it anytime soon? All he did was acknowledge that it would be a difficult task. But apparently, apparently, in Japan difficult means no. So, there you go. Kid Icarus isn't coming out. Difficult? No. Not happening. I mean, but I think that was a pointless story, to be honest. And finally, just the last story of the day. This is actually a pretty fun one. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. This is an article on Gaming Bible. Really scraping the bottom of the barrel this week, Bill. Gaming Bible. Anyway, um, and this is just an interesting one. Gamer sells PlayStation 5 to buy N64 and Childhood Game Collection. Now, I find this article very interesting. Would you trade the PlayStation 5 for your childhood gaming console and your favourite collection of games? It's an interesting question because I'm not that thirsty for a PlayStation 5. But although... Those bloody adaptive triggers are a game changer, I tell you that. Oh, okay, I don't know. Okay, no, 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 no. Let's read the article. Okay, so it's some guy called Traxxas and he's done a post on Reset Era. He's basically done a post saying sold my PS5 for N64. Send help. I mean, you don't need to send any help, it's fine. What you're doing is fine, Traxxas, it's not crazy. So he's saying that he's done the post because he wants people to tell him that he's done the right thing. Do you think he's done the right thing? Would you trade in a PS5 for a retro collection? Absolutely! Would I trade a PS5 in for a GameCube with Mario Kart Double Dash, Metal Gear Solid Twin Straits, Ikaruga, Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil... Oh my days! Like, give it me now! Give it me now! I would dash a PlayStation 5 away. I would dash it away, mate. I would dash it away, mate. Depending on the games in the N64 collection, I would gladly, gladly trade in a PS5 for a 64. If you give me Conquered Bad for a day, uh, do you know what? I can't even bother to list off the real games because there's too many. There's too many. By the time I noticed something was wrong. N64, yeah. SNES? Nah, you'd have to give me some rare, rare games. Even games that, like, I don't even play, like Final Fantasy 3 and all that, just for the sake of having it in the collection. I wouldn't trade in a PS5 for a SNES. Or a NES. Or a Wii. Just those two consoles, and then anything else apart from that? Nah, 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 I'm keeping the PS5. I'm keeping the PS5. <laughs> But yeah, would you trade in a PS5 for a retro collection? And that's all we have time for today. Um, thank you for tuning in. We apologise about the ratchetness of the show this week. Bill, to be honest, we're going to have to change the filming schedule because me working Monday to Friday and then trying to record things on Saturday and Sunday is not working, Bill. I'm telling you, it's not working. I need a life. Yeah. Believe we'll have a meeting to talk about it.